Hi, Fred Reynolds here, and uh, thanks for tuning in to One Foot in Front of the Other. Uh, this is about Kilimanjaro and some thoughts after climbing Kilimanjaro, which I'm a little ashamed of myself that it took me a year to film this and, uh, and post it uh, in light of the fact that it was a year ago this weekend that I left for Tanzania to uh, climb Kilimanjaro. So uh, shame on me, but uh, hey, uh, for those of you who might be thinking of of climbing Kili and, um, and and it's a it's a great adventure and highly recommended but uh, maybe a few things just to uh, get you to think about and be prepared um, I did watch a lot of videos prior to Kili that people had posted uh, I have since posted mine uh, I broke it up into three segments but uh, I really didn't talk about what I'm going to talk about today uh, certainly in in those videos but just some maybe some pointers and and again some things to to think about and uh, prepare yourself for uh, for when you climb Kili you know one thing that I did do prior to Kilimanjaro was I procured a, a Garmin uh, mini uh, I kept that right here uh, on my uh, backpack that I carried um, I could turn that on in the uh, just before we started each day and turned it off once we got to camp but I was able to share a link with family friends and co-workers prior to leaving and they were able to follow me up the mountain um, my bulk of my family is in California uh, and they actually kind of got together on a zoom call and watched me uh, summit so that was kind of cool and, uh, and, and again, not in the video sense, but uh, uh, as this tracked me uh, in, in that sense. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, Millie, my silver lab here, who is my trainer, uh, we're getting, we're training at the moment to do Aconcagua in December. Uh, and uh, I have the Uinta Mountains over here. I have the Wasatch back over here. It's great to have that luxury uh, where I live, and I do call it my backyard. Uh, but I still carry this with me. Um, I turn it on. Um, uh, you know, Garmin pings me a lot and says, hey, congrats, you've reached blah, 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 milestones. But uh, the other thing that I do like is it has this SOS button on it. Uh, whether it's me uh, that might get into some trouble, uh, or possibly uh, I come across somebody who is in distress, I can ping that thing and, uh, and get search and rescue to uh, come and help. So it's a, it's a great, great, uh, a great piece of equipment. Um, Kilimanjaro, I think most outfitters, now I used wilderness travel and we were nine days, eight nights on the mountain. There are some other outfitters out there that uh, take lesser time and um, again, they say pole pole, which is kind of go slow, go slow. Um, I can tell you that by going slow and as you're moving up the mountain, it's gonna give you a much better chance of acclimatizing. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is go too quick, possibly get some altitude sickness, and hey, then your, your trip is cut short because they have to take you back down the mountain. Um, but anyhow, uh, nine days, eight nights on the mountain, um, and you do have porters carrying your duffel bag. And I had, I think, a 90 liter uh, Osprey. But with the duffel bag, um, what came in really handy for me was that I used packing cubes. And um, this larger one, uh, I had maybe four or five. But that larger one, I put like some of the warmer stuff that I was going to be using as we got higher on the mountain. And um, uh, again, I'd get to my tent uh, at the end of whatever day. I could unpack these cubes and I didn't have stuff and I wasn't going through the backpack and trying to find this, find that. 
had another cube that had my, you know, gloves, socks. Uh, had another cube that had uh, a change of, uh, you know, athletic type underwear, breathable underwear, um, and just stuff like that. But you may want to think of packing cubes. Aconcagua, I'll have a backpack on the entire time. Packing cubes won't work for that kind of a uh, uh, ascent up the mountain uh, as well. Uh, so I'd highly recommend using packing cubes in your duffel for Kilimanjaro. Um, a couple of things, um, charging for instance. Um, I use this Power Traveler. This is their Falcon 21. Uh, it has three panels. Um, you know, I'd see some people in videos where they'd hook this to their backpack. Um, I didn't do that. Now, this does not have a battery that it charges to, so it con connects directly to a device. But I'd get to camp at night uh, at the end of that day and I would either drape this over the tent depending upon how my tent was uh, with respect to uh, where the sun was. Uh, if I didn't have that luxury, hey, I found a rock and just laid this across the rock so that the panels were facing the sun and I'd charge whatever um, I needed to. Typically the first thing I would charge would be my phone. Um, and then once others, including some of the porters and our, our trip guides, found out I had this, uh, I became very popular. Um, I carried two uh, charging devices with me on the trip. Um, this was one that a, a buddy of mine uh, gave me a long time ago, but it worked really good for, especially at night. And I would charge things like a remote control, my Garmin Mini, my Garmin watch, um, stuff like that. Uh, easy, and this recharged pretty pretty quickly, uh, especially through, I could connect it directly to this power traveler uh, at camp. Um, this brick I took fully charged with me on the trip. A little heavy, but since I had a porter, that's who carried this. Um, and I think I only used this maybe twice uh, because this really worked pretty well. But this could last, I think, the entire trip. Uh, and that's a product from Otterbox. Um, speaking of Otterbox, um, I just happen to have this because I use it when I kayak. Um, waterproof, crushproof, but this fit in it. My phone fit in it. And when we got up in the colder altitudes, I actually put this in my sleeping bag uh, at night uh, just to make sure things stayed warm. Um, as you get up into colder temperatures, that battery in your iPhone can become uncharged uh, pretty quickly. And I experience that a lot when I ski. If I try to video something, uh, you know, when it's cold and, you know, you're going whatever, 30, 35 miles an hour. Um, yeah, you want battery. So, and if you're documenting your trip up Kilimanjaro, the last thing you want is for your iPhone to go wah, 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 uh, on that trip. But, um, anyhow, nine days, eight nights. Um, that first, um, uh, afternoon we got to our first camp, I think Mount Mawaka. Uh, we were introduced to our home for the next eight nights. If you've never spent more than a couple of nights in a tent, um, especially, I mean, they're all pretty much like this. Um, uh, yeah, you've got uh, a real awakening. And whether it's changing clothes, you might be on your butt, you might be on your back shimmying this up, you might be on your knees pulling this up, um, you might be bent over at a 90 degree angle pulling this up. Um, you know, the top half is, is, is certainly a lot easier, but the bottom half, it can be tough. And uh, again, in our case, eight nights in, in, uh, in that tent was, was different. Um, the other thing too, 
um, the bathroom. Uh, this is this is this was our bathroom, and um, yeah, I did uh, I did my number two business in there. Keeping it real here, people. Uh, number one, you could always find that bush, that rock, or or whatever. But um, uh, and that that comes to number one. Um, pee bottle. I had an Algene bottle like this, wide mouth, that I had labeled pee bottle. I had another one of these that I used uh, for um, uh, hydration. And um, uh, but yeah, you're going to need this. Now, for instance, at we stayed in the crater at 18,838 the night before summit. Everything in the tent froze except for the pee bottle. But one thing people to be aware of, and again, I found out after the fact that this is a, a natural bodily function, is that you get up in altitude, if your body is functioning properly, uh, you pee a lot. And I, went, got, I got my sleeping bag, I think about eight o'clock that night. And between eight and one, I peed seven times. Now this held about too comfortably three, yeah, that was pushing it. That meant at minus 10 degrees, I had to open up that tent, you know, pour this out. Um, and, and that particular night I had to pour it out twice. But uh, you talk about uncomfortable. Um, yeah, because uh, it's cold, you're getting out of a sleeping bag and no bueno. Um, platypus, I have some platypus hydration bags. But I understand platypus, and I have my name on a list, believe it or not. Uh, and this is more for Aconcagua. But it, it has the wide mouth, uh, like an Nalgene bottle. And uh, you know, at least I could pee in that, in my tent, uh, without having to open it and probably get through the night pretty, uh, hopefully pretty easily. Um, also speaking of your tent, I found these on Amazon. Um, I'm going to say Benoit, but a really, really nice, bright flashlight, lightweight. But I took uh, I took one of these, I think, on Amazon. Uh, it comes in a pair. But I kept this just kind of flat in my tent next to my sleeping pad. And if I had to get up in the middle of the night, it's got a real easy on-off button, and it illuminated the tent just fine. Um, uh, and it instead of putting a headlamp on and stuff like that, this was really easy, really quick, on, get back in the sleeping bag, and, and off. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You know, another thing to talk about real quick is hygiene. Um, I did procure a, um, a, uh, a towel that, again, in normal circumstances, dries really quick. Um, and of course, there are body wipes, etc. But I, I bring up the towel and maybe some other clothing um, in that as you get up to altitude, and I'll say like a lava tower camp is at 15.2, um, guess what? Things don't dry um, and are very reluctant to dry. <laughs> uh, so I would say in the case of one of these, don't bring it. Um, body wipes, um, uh, REI sells them. They're a little bit bigger than, you know, your traditional uh, baby wipes and, and things like that. But I can tell you people that from the standpoint of hygiene, as you get higher in the mountain, and again, this is just me, but hygiene went out the window. Um, uh, I slept, I slept, hiked, uh, and, and, and existed in the same set of clothes for probably three days, two nights at least. Um, maybe, maybe even three days, three nights. Um, gross, but sometimes the last thing you want to do is, is, especially when it starts getting colder, is change those clothes. Um, uh, they do bring you, in the case of wilderness travel, and uh, they bring you a bowl of, of hot water in the mornings and you have it there when you're done in the evenings. But my hands were just gross, just absolutely gross. Um, but you know, I washed as, as best as I could. 
Um, you know, one thing too that um, um, I'd like to talk about, you know, sunscreen is so important, but I had a pair of, of I'll say glove liners on um, like this. And when we went from Moore Camp at 13 and change up to Lava Tower Camp, uh, I had these on because it was cold. And just to show you, or at least tell you the importance of sunscreen, um, I took those off for maybe hour, hour and a half. It, started, it warmed up a little bit to the point where I took them off. And I can tell you that at the end of the day, um, my the back of my hands were fried didn't even think about sunscreen back here and i burnt the crap out of the back of my hands so try to be as cognizant of you as you can of of that um you know another product to talk about is uh this is from arteryx but i wore this a lot um long sleeves especially when it was a little bit warmer and, and um, it was sunny the entire time we were there but um, uh, great product, has a hood. I have this, you know, over my head, and this was more sun related, uh, as well as the long sleeves. And I wore a Tilly hat and I wore a ball cap coming down, but uh, I had my Tilly hat on and that went over the top of that just fine. So uh, I, would, um, I would strongly recommend getting something with a hood, thin, lightweight, breathable. This is Arteryx and um, I know backcountry.com has some really nice stuff as well. Um, what else? Um, sleeping, for instance. Um, I had a lot of people ask me about sleeping and how'd you sleep? Well, as, as I got up in altitude, you know, one thing that uh, um, I noticed was sleep was a little bit tougher. So I told people that I rested, I think, more than I slept. But um, as it got up in, in altitude, um, I did bring this pair of uh, fleece gloves. I slept in these. And I also brought a pair of heavy wool socks that I slept in. I didn't hike in, um, but uh, of, of these. And something that I did do, especially with the socks, not the gloves, but I use foot hand warmers, and I put those, um, I had another pair of socks on, these went over them, and I used foot warmers in between those two uh, pairs of socks, and, and that helped a lot. Um, something else that helped me too is, um, this is a product from uh, Don Joy, and uh, there's a, these are a size medium, but the nice thing about the tag in here is it says M-L, M-R, but I got two different colors because I that I could really keep track. But I wore these um, summit morning as with um, our group, we came off the summit and we went down 9,000 feet of elevation in one day. And that was hard, that was really hard. Um, I think these things save my knees tremendously, like tremendously. Um, trekking poles are required. Um, this is, uh, these are from Black Diamond. Um, I like these uh, from the standpoint that um, when they break down, you know, they, they, they break down really easy. But you know, it goes to that really lightweight. And when you put them back together again, they, when you extend this, there's a, a pin right here that locks it in place. But um, easy to adjust, has more vertical adjustment here. Again, lightweight. I really like this product from, uh, from Black Diamond. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, we talked about the tent, we talked about the bathroom, talked about the pee bottle, talked about hygiene. Um, uh, yeah, hygiene. But if you have any questions, 
um, put some put a comment below. Uh, I'm happy to answer a question. Um, again, if you're thinking about climbing Killy, it's a fabulous adventure. I highly recommend it. Uh, do your research on a outfitter, and I think that uh, that you'll get a lot of benefit by taking more time going up the mountain. You can be as fit as fit can be, but I can tell you altitude is something you really can't train for. Uh, and the only way to train for it is by going slow and, uh, and following the, the guide's um, direction. You bet. I hope you climb Killy. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing another video soon uh, of my Aconcagua training and uh, certainly looking forward to putting that video together when I get back from, from Aconcagua. So, seven summits, I'm not sure I'll do all seven, but um, I got Killy under my belt and, uh, and hopefully we'll succeed at Aconcagua. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.